I last crossed this border from Israel into Gaza four years ago. The sense of hope and anticipation then was palpable. Peter George, uh, ABC Australia. Israeli soldiers were delighted to be ending their occupation of this foreboding and dangerous place. A hundred meters away on the other side of this border, Palestinians four years ago were ecstatic that their long dreamed of state seemed within reach. Australia, Iowa. Thank you, Shikran. But what a change four years has reaped. Optimism has evaporated. The mood in Gaza has turned bleak once more. الحال هذه المدارس يعني بتشت... هلا حبايبي هلا عينينا لكم يا عمي هيز ا بيج مان ان ايفري سنس اوف ذا وورد ارافات لويالست ريزيستنس ليدر جيلد باي اسرائيليز هيز ا جينيوين بالستينيان هيرو ابو حسين ويلكمد ذا بيس 4 ييرز اغو بس هيز نوت هابي وذ ا نيو بالستين في فتره الانتفاضه وكانوا اليهود موجودين رغم الذل ورغم الاحتلال الا انه كانت محلاتنا كلها بتفتح فشغلنا هالقتا واقف لانه طبعا عندنا rather than the prosperity Abu Hussein had hoped for peace has brought him economic disaster على اساس نقدر رح نعيش فيه طلع هذا المكان هذه مكنه اوتوماتيك بتعمل احجار حياتها زي ما انت شايف Abu Hussein's construction business and his confidence have collapsed. Israel has been able to destroy all the windows that can be possible for us. That means the life that we can live through it or the air that we breathe through it. He's no doubt the main blame lies with the Israelis, but even a loyalist like Abu Hussein knows Israel is not his only problem. Whatever work there is, is being snapped up by monopolies run by the new Palestinian Authority. Monopolies that are lining pockets of a special chosen few. كيف تعمل لها رصيد في البنك وكيف تشتري العمارة هدول لو صارت معركة بس التذكرة يمكن بتلاقيها قبل شهر جازة شنو تو موجودة بيحملها وبيسافر What is your name? شو اسمك؟ محمود اضرب كاف بوم اضرب كاف It was thinking of his family's future that sustained Abu Hussein through the long years of Israeli occupation and imprisonment محمود فدخلت التلاجة وعشت فيها ثمان أيام على التوالي تلاجة ثلاث درجات تحت السفر دخل معي واحد من دار المصري مات بعد أربع ساعات وأنا قعدت فيها ثمان أيام. If he's tormented today, it's because instead of the freedoms he fought for, there is corruption, nepotism, and abuse of power by the very leaders to whom he was so loyal for so long. Just at the end of the laneway, there's an example of how the powerful are grabbing what they want for themselves. These buildings have been used وهاي يفترض كانت انه مباني عامه في البيت ولقاء في عملي 
But as soon as we try to look more closely, the heavy hand of authority reveals itself. You can argue that it's to deaf ears. This is military intelligence. His authority is the pistol he wears in his waistband. Once powerful, Abu Hussein finds himself powerless. What happened next, we can't show you. But it's the sort of thing that should never happen in the open, democratic state that Yasser Arafat promised his people. Our cassettes were confiscated and we were all bundled off to the central prison where only Abu Hussein's undoubted status as a hero saved us from further trouble. Now, in this part of the world, it was a pretty trivial affair. But it's just one more example of the sort of thing that Palestinians have come to fear. The real power is in the hands of uh, the security forces. And of course, if ironically, I think that with all the, whether you like it or not, it is Arafat who is controlling them. And if perhaps if he wasn't there, we would have real hell. Dr. Siraj, who's been locked up and tortured himself for protesting human rights abuses, says it's crucial the security forces are reined in quickly. I said this to Yasser Arafat. I want a Palestinian authority that is very strong so I can feel secure. I don't want this authority to be challenged by armed uh, groups. On the contrary, I want a strong Palestinian authority. But I want it strong within the law, with the law so I can be proud of it. In the best of times, the road from revolution to democracy is a hard one. Israeli belligerence makes it harder still. For all his promises of democracy, the man Palestinians call Abu Ammar, father of the revolution, has had no practical experience of it. Surrounded by acolytes, Yasser Arafat seems more remote than ever from his people. Yet their hopes for peace and democracy lie entirely in his hands. Suddenly there is a group of people who have the power, who have the authority, who have the money, and we are left to rot. When the people who came from abroad, from Tunis, are having the senior posts, senior jobs, that was, did not go well with the people. The fear is that Palestine may be on a slide towards becoming just one more Arab state ruled by a small, powerful, autocratic elite. a young Gazan bride has married well. He's the son of a general almost always by Arafat's side. Another exile returned to wield almost unquestioned power. Even the way they look tells a story. The bride's relatives are for the main part dressed in the conservative Gazan manner. The groom's friends and family brought with them their fashion sense and their self-confidence and their power from their exile abroad. For those with no influence, those who lived through the occupation, the birth pangs of statehood have brought little reward. Getting by is hard. Getting help from the new Palestinian authority a bureaucratic nightmare. These young women want help to pay for their education. But all their elected representative, Dr. Kronz, can do is pass a recommendation up the line right to the top. 
President Yasser Arafat demands ultimate control over every decision. But while many struggle to raise the $20 a year now necessary to send a child to a UN school, millions of dollars of international aid have been wasted, misused and misappropriated. It was Dr. Kronz who headed a parliamentary investigation into the disappearance of these funds. It must have been a great disappointment exactly, to so find that this money had been misspent, misused. Yeah, of course, you know, it was a great disappointment. And also, you know, when the people look at some in the government that those people used to struggle for the sake of Palestine, to struggle to have independence, and today they are misusing their position or they, they, they work or they do something which is against the interests of their own people. You know, this makes some, uh, the people feel disappointed to feel that this is not what we want, this is not what we struggle for. There are more ominous developments still, from cops on the street to the sinister intelligence agencies. The myriad arms of state security too easily turn menacing. And in this authoritarian climate, few dare complain or even talk about such matters. Accused of various misdemeanors, but with no proof against him, the police simply tried to beat a confession out of this man and to mete out some rough justice. After long years of often brutal Israeli treatment, reports of Palestinian forces beating, torturing, even killing their own people seem a tragic irony. As a former guerrilla commander himself, General Sabawi acknowledges that the transition from freedom fighter to policeman is not an easy one. There are genuine attempts to shore up police procedures, but within the complex web of multiple security forces, some branches operate with few controls and fewer scruples. Opponents of the regime, or merely critics, take their lives in their hands, especially when they offend the powerful clique around Yasser Arafat. This is a serious problem, the, the clique around the ruler. And if someone tells Arafat, if someone in the clique tells Arafat that someone is an enemy, what happens to that person? Well, the reaction we, we, we get is, is really imprisonment. Four years ago, Gaza seemed a place full of rich promise. And for those with the right connections, it still is. For some Palestinians, the future seems assured. There's no doubt that Yasser Arafat's intention has always been freedom for the Palestinians. But in the troubled path from revolution to democracy, they may find that instead of freedom, 
they have merely changed from one system of oppression to another. <laughs>